Ten years ago, on the eve of COP21, as the world was devising a response to the climate emergency, one key player was overlooked, the ocean. At the heart of the climate system, the ocean absorbs 90% of excess heat and nearly 30% of CO2 emissions from human activities. Without it, life on Earth would be unbearable and the battle against climate change already lost. And yet, the ocean was already facing many threats. Because a healthy ocean is our best ally against the climate and biodiversity crises, it was critical to advocate for the recognition of its vital role. Back in 2014, policymakers and climate negotiators did not have this crucial fact in mind. NGOs, together with scientists from across the ocean community, decided to take action collectively. That is why on June 8, 2014, on World Ocean Day, the Ocean and Climate Platform was officially launched at UNESCO, finally giving the ocean a voice. The common determination, along with the mobilization of island states, quickly proved effective. The Paris Agreement was adopted, with the ocean included in its preamble. I urge you to answer with courage and vision. And I count on your strong leadership and commitment to make this world better for all. The Ocean and Climate Platform celebrated its first victory. It was nonetheless clear much remained to be done. Year after year, the international ocean community rallied and increasingly empowered the ocean and climate platform. Through sound, science-based advocacy, the ocean became increasingly visible. At COP22, civil society was formally recognized as a driving force in the implementation of the Paris Agreement. In 2017, the United Nations held the first ocean conference in New York aiming to accelerate the protection of the ocean and its sustainable management. For the first time in 2019, the IPCC dedicated a special report to the ocean, cryosphere, and climate change, shedding light on their interdependencies. Afterwards, the ocean made the headlines at COP25 in Madrid, the first ever blue COP, which included the ocean in its final outcome. Ever since, the ocean has been included in every climate COP decision. A couple years later, the UN proclaimed the Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. A unique framework to develop the science we need for the ocean we want. And at COP26, an annual ocean and climate dialogue was made permanent under the UN Climate Convention. In 2022, governments adopted the Kunming Montreal Agreement for People and the Planet, committing to protect 30% of coastal and marine areas by 2030. Then, for the first time, the world took stock of global climate action, and the outcomes were unequivocal. To course correct, the ocean must be front and center. Every step of the way, civil society has played a crucial role. From 15 organizations in 2014, the Ocean and Climate Platform now counts over 100 members. We can be proud. Looking at 2025, 2030, and beyond, there are challenges on the horizon. But together, we will hold the course. We will carry on mobilizing our network fostering better knowledge and understanding of the ocean, to embark decision makers, to move from commitments to action. Because our future depends on the well-being of the ocean. Together, we won't give up.